Hello everybody and welcome to Camp Weirdness here in Surprise. It's your weirdness correspondent, Evan Grant. I'm here at what is not Rangers Spring Training and is not technically Rangers Minor League Spring Training. It is Rangers Minor League Mini Camp, uh, which is taking place in lieu of the big leaguers being here. But there's nothing mini about this mini camp. There's 134 players here um, and have been since the start of the week. And in a lot of cases, guys who have been here much longer than that. Uh, and they are supplanted or, or supplemented, I should say, by some 60, 65 uh, on-field staff, whether they're analysts, uh, instructors, uh, the part of the Rangers really much large enlarged um, uh, peak performance mental skills department. Uh, so there's almost a ratio of about two pupils to one type of instructor here. It's, a, it's not a, it's, it's not a small camp, but there, there's very, um, but there's lots of one-on-one -on -one instruction. Let's put it that way. Uh, I say it's weird too, because uh, even though this is, certainly a better situation than replacement spring was way back in 1995 for the idea of, of writing stories. Most of the players who are here are not going to compete this year at the big league level. And a lot of these players are um, more mid-level prospects uh, or, or prospects who are a long way from the big league. So it's, it's hard to tell their stories in relation to the, to the 2021, 2022 season. I'm, I still write checks occasionally, kids. Checks are pieces of paper that you send with money on them, uh, and I've been dating them the wrong year. Anyway, um, uh, in 1995, when we had replacement spring, there was some play acting involved in that you were talking to players who clearly weren't big league players, but they were intending to be a big league team, and management was talking about the big league team and they were talking about position battles, and you were you were writing in the context of what was going to be um, a comical and sad 1995 season. Uh, right now, uh, the, these guys don't figure into the 2022 season. Most of them don't. Um, there are a couple of, of stories, and we'll get to those. Um, but management's not talking, and 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 they don't want to get involved here. They're basically. Um, uh, they're basically support staff and, and minor league instructors are running the drills and running uh, the camp. Uh, so it's, it's, it's awkward. It's just awkward. But it certainly beats no baseball whatsoever. Uh, the first two days of, of this camp were, were good to just be out on the field talking baseball with some people again. Um, we certainly haven't solved any labor issues. Um, don't think anybody wants to try and do that with me. Um, but you didn't tune in here to talk about labor, uh, and the less we say about that, the better. So let's get the let's get to some news, some Rangers news. Obviously, um, if it's the Rangers and it's spring training and it's early, it seems like the news is bad. So uh, we are sitting here and have been waiting uh, for several days now to find out what the situation is going to be with Josh Young, uh, the Rangers' top prospect or top position player prospect, depending on which list you uh, uh, subscribe to. Um, he had some issues with his shoulder, uh, while lifting weights when he got out here. Uh, that's been diagnosed as a labral strain. Uh, I believe he was going to get a second opinion on it, but the very strong possibility exists that by the time you're watching this, he may have made a decision to have surgery that will keep him out a significant portion of the year. Uh, what's to be determined is how long that would be because this is his, not his throwing shoulder. Um, it is his lead shoulder when he hits, but it's not his throwing shoulder. So um, whether that has an impact on when he's able to play the field or if, it, if it's more involved in, in him uh, swinging the bat, that, that's still to be determined. But in the meantime, Josh Young is out of the third base picture. It pretty much puts Isaiah kind of for back into the driver's seat, even though he's not here, even though Rangers can't communicate with him at the current moment because he's on the 40-man roster. Um, and so they can't even tell him that, hey, we're planning for you to play third base. Uh, welcome to baseball in 2022. Uh, Andy Ibanez, 
is the Rangers kind of backup third baseman, good hitter, um, maybe a more advanced hitter than kind of Falefa in some ways, not as good a fielder, but he did field well last year in an audition playing second base and some third base. Uh, and I think that when Andy gets in here, he's going to get a much more legitimate look as a, at, at a more significant role. I, I think the Rangers could get him a significant number of at bats, whether it's, um, playing against some left-handers uh, at third base, occasionally um, playing somewhere, uh, occasionally playing second or first, and um, also at uh, some DH at bats. Uh, so uh, that's going to be something to look for, again, whenever a big league camp starts. Uh, that's a refrain you'll hear often um, here at, uh, inside the Rangers, disgruntled old man uh, video reports. But until we get spring training, really underway. It, it, everything kind of comes with a, a disclaimer on it. Uh, another interesting story here, Matt Bush, who is one of the few guys with big league experiences in camp. If you remember, Matt came back last year, pitched on the final day of the season after missing all but the first week of the year. He's pitched four innings, I think, in the big leagues over the last four years had two Tommy John surgeries, a flexor muscle injury. And when he came back last year, it certainly seemed to be a really nice swan song or parting gift, but he made it clear it wasn't going to be uh, just a, a case of I, Matt Bush, made it back. This was intended to get him back on the map. And he's got a real chance, if he's healthy, to win a spot in the bullpen. This this bullpen, whenever it does appear, um, is inexperienced. Um there's some talented arms there, but there's not a lot of experience. And the two most reliable arms, Jose Leclerc and, and Jonathan Hernandez, are likely out until May as they recover from Tommy John surgery. So there's an opportunity for Matt to, to win a job here. What I thought was interesting the other day is, is, is Matt's got three-plus years of Major League service, even though he's pitched in five different seasons. Nick Tropiano, who's a good candidate to win a spot in the starting rotation, uh, has four-plus years. Uh, and has pitched in seven seasons in the big leagues. He's not here. Um, and it kind of speaks to the decisions that, that some players have to make right now. This is not a strike. Players aren't prohibited um, from going to camp if they're not on the 40-man roster. Tropiano is on a minor league deal and would have a major league invite. But it, it, it puts players in positions, if you feel like you're a major leaguer and you've been a major leaguer for some time, do you want to show solidarity with your friend? With, with, the, with the rest of your, your um, uh, colleagues? Or do you, since you don't actually have a job, do you need to get to camp and, and take every opportunity to put yourself in front of coaches and, and, and managerial staff? And so uh, the Rangers baseball operations people have, have said they're very understanding on both perspectives and do respect both perspectives and, and, and aren't going to use that as a factor in uh, how they make a decision. But... Bush is here, Tropiano is not, uh, and whenever the big leaguers report, that I expect is when Nick will will show up. So, um, speaking of pitching, Jack Leiter is here. This is his first professional camp. Uh, I wrote a column that ran in the paper on Wednesday morning that talked about Jack Leiter being a professional now for eight months, and, and it almost feels like he's won. You know, when he when he signed last year, he didn't pitch. He had thrown 110 innings at Vanderbilt, really had a, a heavy workload all the way through the College World Series. Um, and then in the fall, he went back to school. He worked out at Vanderbilt, was in communication with Rangers personnel, but worked out with Vanderbilt people um, at, at their facilities. Came to Arizona for a short period of time to basically throw in the Rangers pitching lab, get some biomechanical feedback, let people get their arms around him a little bit, but it was really just a long weekend. Um, and then he went back to, to Nashville to school. Um, he came out here in, in mid-January, has been here, living in the Rangers dorm ever since. Still hasn't faced a hitter as a, as a member of the Rangers organization. He's working to that. He's completely healthy. Um, I wish here that we could insert a photo uh, that our ace photographer, Smiley Poole, who is here with me, took of Jack Leiter, um, particularly his lower half. He was wearing shorts yesterday. And when you look at the size of his thighs and his calves and the way he walks, 
it's a different solidly built kind of element than you see from from a lot of young starting pitchers I, i'm looking at all the young pitchers out here and they're they're by and large they're they're long and lean and gangly and they've got to put muscle on and add add some 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 thickness to their lower half and, and jack is already there so um he's there with his, his delivery he's there with his stuff uh He's certainly still got to work on a, on a third pitch. Um, but th this is a kid who's going to be on a fast track. He'll start on an advanced level, whether that's advanced class A or, or double A, I think remains to be determined a lot by spring training. Um, but physically, he's also more matured than I think most kids are that come to their first big league camp. Uh, so there will be a lot of anticipation for, for when Jack actually gets on the mound Faces faces some hitters for the first time. Um, right now, I think one of the biggest projects. Uh, sorry for the number of ums. You know, I'm still not used to this whole video thing. But to go back to one of the biggest projects, I think the Rangers can pay attention to this during this minor league camp is the switching of positions of a number of players. I'm, uh, switching it might be too strong a word. I would say the um, adding of some some versatility for a number of players. Justin Foskey, the first round pick in, in 29, in 2020 is doing some work at third base. Um, he had played third base at Mississippi state his sophomore year before going to second. Um, Dustin Harris, who may well be the top hitting prospect in the organization, um, or certainly in the conversation with Josh Young is, is working out pretty heavily in the outfield as compared to last year when he played first and third base. Uh, and there may be a real track for him in, in the outfield. The Rangers have have issues in the outfield. Um, I'm not sure that they have a ton of, of outfield prospects the way they do uh, depth in the middle infield and, and particularly um, at, at, at starting pitching. Um, so if, they, if they're able to move uh, Harris to left field um, or possibly even center field, uh, it, it's going to give them another level of prospects. Along the same lines, Josh Smith, uh, who was acquired in the Joey Gallo trade, uh, has, uh, has taken up on his offer to the Rangers that he would like to go out and play the outfield and learn to play the outfield a little bit. So um, he's working out in, in left field some as well. Uh, and... Um, uh, those are the those are the biggest names. I, I believe Ezekiel Duran, who is also uh, from the Gallo trade, will work out at other positions um, once he gets here. But he's on the forty man roster, so he's not working out in camp yet. So, so for the time being, that's where we are on the Rangers minor league camp. I wish I had more news to report to you on the start of big league camp and when that might get here. But that's going to be up to the powers that are way above me. Maybe I'll put together my own common sense proposal and see if, if, um, if Major League Baseball and the Players Association actually want to listen to me. It doesn't work in my home. It doesn't work with my kids. I, I don't know why it would work with baseball. But um, at least you'll indulge me. So, um, or some of you will. Anyway, until, uh, until then... I'm going to sign off here from Camp Weirdness and get out there and go watch some minor leaguers and report back to you. Take care, everybody.